What's up, Final Cut Nation? Today, we're taking a deep dive into the world of 3D text. 3D text is having quite a moment in the entertainment industry right now. No matter which show you're watching, chances are it probably incorporates 3D text in the opening credits or maybe like in the movie poster. For instance, the show Loki uses 3D text. Now, I don't really watch that show, but I bet a lot of you guys are into it. House of the Dragon on HBO, or as I like to call it, Game of Thrones, 90210, or Guilty Pleasure, Love is Blind on Netflix. 3D text is everywhere. So today we're gonna deep dive into those 3D text settings. I'm gonna show you what all of the menu options do. Let's just dive right into it. So here we are in Final Cut, and the first thing you need to know is where to access the 3D tiles. Now there's something you should definitely not do at this stage that I'm gonna show you later in the video, but for now, let's just head over to our Titles and Generators sidebar. Our first category there is 3D, and let's just pick a custom 3D title and I'm gonna drop it here into my timeline. Now let's head on over to the text inspector, which is found under the little paragraph icon here. And this is where we can really customize our text. So let me change what the text says. And I'm going to change the font on this one as well. Let's go Apple Gothic and I'm gonna reduce the size to have it fit better in our window. I wanna pick something not too chunky and you'll see why later. All right, let's scroll down in the inspector window to find the 3D text menu. Now, if you're not seeing all of these details here, you wanna expand them by running your mouse cursor along the line that says 3D text and hitting the show button. And this is where we can do a lot of customization. So I can increase the depth. So my text looks super 3D. I can change the depth direction by default, it's on centered, which means the depth is going to expand toward the front and back equally, but I can change that to having the depth just move backward or forward. I'm gonna go centered though. The next slider is going to control the weight. This is why I didn't wanna to pick too chunky of a font because I can really make it thicker here using the weight or I can really thin it down if I choose. Let's go a little chunky, why not? The front edge on the custom text is set to bevel, but you have a lot of other options here. You can make the front edge square. You can give it more of a detailed look, like with ridge. You can make it hollow with the square ring, and you can even customize the size of the front edge. Let's set this back to square. You can also customize what the back edge looks like. So by default, it's going to be the same as the front, no matter what we switch the front edge to, but you can customize the look of it. Let's switch it down to ridge. And how do we know what the back edge looks like? If we go up to rotation and spin on the Y axis, this text around, you can see that the back edge has a ridge as opposed to the front, which was just flat. We can also change the back edge size. So how thick that ridge is. Let's spin that text back around. And we can also play with the inside corners. By default, they're straight, but you can round them out to give the text more of a soft look, or you can have them mitered. I'm gonna switch it back to straight. The next set of controls have to do with lighting. Let's open up the lighting controls. And right now we're set to the standard lighting style, but you can change that and give this text a lot of different looks. And by changing the angle of the lighting, it changes the appearance of the text on the different surfaces of the text. The next two options, self shadow and environment, I'm going to skip over them for now. We're gonna come back to those once we change some more attributes of this text to really highlight how they work. Let's head down to substance and change what this text is made of. By default, it has a plastic look, but there's a lot of options here. Let's switch it to fabric. The default fabric is a blue knit and we can play with the roughness of the knit. Let's open up the placement options. We can increase the scale of the knit so it looks more like a chunky knit. We can play with the rotation of it and the position of it as well. Let's switch this to something else. Under fabric, why don't we do polka dot? Now you can see that it is a polka dot pattern. And when I play with the scale with the polka dots, I can actually change the size of the polka dots to be really small or really big. Let's do something totally different. Under substance, let's now change it to wood. And now we can choose from many different types of wood, like for instance, these old planks. Under the wood options, I can play with the grain. And then under place on, it's set to object, but I can change it to glyph. What this means is that every single letter will have the same wood grain 
pattern on it. You can see at the bottom of each character, it's kind of a more solid part of the grain and up at the top, it's more textured and every letter follows that pattern. I think that having the object as opposed to glyph on the place on setting for wood text makes a lot more sense. It looks more realistic. Let's go back up to material and I want to show you something else that I think is really, really cool about 3D text in Final Cut. Under material, the default is that all of the surfaces are a single material, but we can change that to multiple. And now you can see that we have options for the front, front edge, side, back edge, and back. I'm going to change the front edge of our text from square to ridge. And now on the front edge option under material, let's change this to paint. Let's go latex paint. So now the ridge on the front edge has a teal latex paint finish while the rest of the letters are still wood. And we can change the color of that paint using this spectrum here. We can make it any color we want. And on the sides, we could have a completely different material. We could do something like stone and how about a white marble. So now the front of the text is wood, the front ridge is latex paint, and the sides of the letters are stone. And let's do something completely different for the back. What if we did wrapping paper? And now let me head back up to our rotation so we could flip this text around and see what that looks like. So obviously this is a very specific look. Let me create something for you that I think you might have more use for. I'm gonna switch the material back to single. And on the material for all facets, let's go metal and let's select gold. So now all of our surfaces here are gold and we can play with the shininess of the gold, which changes the way the letters look as we move that around. Now let's take a look at some of the options we skipped over before. Let's head on over to environment. The environment affects the reflections in the text. So the default is field, but we can switch it to colorful and you can play with the properties here to get very specific looks. We can go to light box parking lot and you can see the image of the parking lot down here in the materials sample so watch what happens when i play with the rotation we can go rooftop we could go to softbox above which is really just lighting from the top here and if we wanted to increase that intensity it would be as if that light was getting brighter we could go to spotlights squares and woods now let's move on to the self shadows option. Basically what self shadows does is it allows the characters to cast shadows on itself to give it more of a 3D look. I'm gonna change the lighting to above and I'm gonna reduce the shininess on this gold material just to really highlight what the self shadows do. Watch as I turn on and off self shadows, how different the text looks. And the other thing to know about 3D text is just like with regular text, if you highlight certain characters here in your viewer or up in the text inspector, you can change the properties of that text. Guys, while I'm playing with these text features and getting myself a custom look, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, I think we've got a really fun look going here. I like this a lot. Let's head over to the title inspector and play with the animation of this text a bit. So I'm gonna head over to the title inspector, which is this square with the T in it. And using the custom text parameters, we can have a lot of fun with this 3D text and show it off from every angle. Now let me show you what you don't want to do when working with 3D text in Final Cut. A lot of times when we want just a simple title, we'll hit Control T to create a basic title. And when you go into the text inspector and scroll down, there are options here for 3D text. However, there's a big limitation with creating text this way in Final Cut. If you notice in the text inspector, there is no keyframing. So if you want your text, let's say to be at an angle, like we did earlier, let me crank up the depth so we can really see here. It would have to stay at that angle at all times. You cannot animate the text in the text inspector. And when you create a basic title, there are no published parameters in the title inspector for you to create those animating moves with. Furthermore, if you head over to the video inspector where you can keyframe, let's say the rotation of your text, 
you can only rotate on the Z axis. There's no ability to rotate on the X axis to have your text tilt back and forth or on the Y axis to have it spin left to right. It only goes around on the Z axis. Now you might have a plugin like this one, Alex 4D, which I will drop in on this text where you can now rotate things on the X and Y axis, but it's not true 3D, unfortunately. So it's really important that when you start working with 3D titles in Final Cut, you don't just create a basic title if you want to be able to move that text around in a 360 degree motion and really see the back sides or the depth of your text. Now, in the title inspector in Final Cut, you are still very limited with the movements you can make in Final Cut Pro with this text. You can animate it in, in a lot of different ways, but if you wanted that text to be more dynamic, you really need to head over to Apple Motion. Apple Motion has a lot more, well, actually, why don't I just show you? Here in Apple Motion, you can have the text continuously rotate and tumble around in a lot of different ways in any way that you can imagine. So if you're really interested in working with 3D text, I highly, highly, highly recommend you get Apple Motion. It is the best value in the App Store, I promise you. I have so many tutorials here on YouTube to help you understand Apple Motion. And if you really want a deep dive kickstart in Apple Motion, I have my own course, Motion Launchpad, which you can find at jenjager.com. And I will also link to it right here. Okay, you guys. So I hope this helped you understand how to work with 3D text in Final Cut. Did you guys like this video? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I know you're going to love and I'll see you again.